let's pray. <laughs> I think we need some joy. Such bad news all around. Let's, Father, we thank you for <laughs> the joy of the Lord's our strength. In the midst of a lot of the things going on, we thank you. You are the light. We thank you for leading us, guiding us, giving us discernment. Help us, Lord, to walk in the valley of the shadow of death. We thank you, Lord, that what is death? It's where's your sting? That there is another world that we're going to all go to because we have eternal life. And we thank you for Jesus who died for us and we want to live for him. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. amen. Um, as you're opening your Bible, Matthew 24, please. And then I'm just going to read from an email here. Uh, I've been hearing a lot about people saying they like that a game within a game, YouTube. So we'll put that on the description. It's an older one, but it kind of talks about, <laughs> you got to know what's going on. It's a game within a game. I'm not teaching that again. But this uh, couple things from Sweden. I've uh, been hearing from three people from Sweden. And she said, yes, we saw your last video, and Sweden is preparing us that we could soon be in war. And then another one from uh, Sweden said, prepare for lack of food, water, electricity. And this one from Sweden said, I was in the New Age also for 30 years and shocked to see it in the church nowadays from the message last week. And then the World Economic Forum says, prepare for mass civil unrest in 2024. So we've heard from, in just the last week, Sweden, Finland, Canada, Nebraska, New York, California, Oregon, Arizona, Minnesota, Pennsylvania. So tell us where you're watching from. We love to, to see where you're all plugging in. So in Matthew 24, let's look at verse 3. Keep Matthew 24 close to you these days because as you read it, you get strength. Um, don't listen to what all the people say, listen to what God says, right, in his word. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when these things be. When, tell us when, these, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. First of all, we need to know deception is huge in this hour. I don't care if it's coming from the White House to the penthouse to the whatever outhouse. Uh, <laughs> deception is on the rise. <laughs> Take heed that no man deceive you. <laughs> For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. In other words, they're going to use the God card. And always beware when somebody is trying to push that they're something or other and they're saying that they are a Christian in this hour because by their fruits you shall know them. And sometimes they're snakes and we knew there was a snake by their fruit and then we try to deceive ourselves into thinking, oh, they got to be good, they got to be good. Well, the end times, it says the evil men shall what? Get better and better? No, they're going to wax worse and worse. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. We're supposed to be not troubled. First of all, there's nothing we can do about it anyway. But we have to walk in the peace of God and not let the bad news overwhelm us. And it's supernatural, really, the peace that passes understanding when you become a Christian. Because in the natural, there's so much turmoil, but with Christ, there's peace. So we see that we're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for thy name's sake. Don't you just love that verse? And then, this is the verse I want to zero in on. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Verse 10. So what's going to be the sign 
before he comes and returns, betrayal, offenses. We're going to talk about being offended, guarding our hearts. Uh, I want to kind of put myself, uh, tell you some stories that I've had to deal with. <laughs> I just kind of thought we need to lighten things up just a little bit. Because uh, offense isn't really funny. When you get offended, you're hurt. You're injured, you're wounded, you feel very betrayed. It's, it's a terrible thing to go through. Uh, and I always got say, take your medicine with a spoonful of sugar. So if you have a little joy, sometimes it helps the truth go down. And verse 11, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we have to endure to the end. I don't care what we believe, what we've been taught. Right now I'm an ex-Pentecostal, charismatic, word of faith, NAR uh, move. I've been in them all. Uh, all titles have been given to me, blah, blah, blah. And just be a simple Christian, read your Bible, right? Just be a simple Christian, read the Bible. Because before what we'd do, we'd sit under people and they'd sell us books and then we'd go by what their books said and we'd... <laughs> Jim's having a hard time with my humor. <laughs> I put these two together, and I, I'm telling you, they're, they're trouble. But many Amen. shall be offended. In the Greek, that word means the majority. So it's not just a few people in the end times. We're seeing right problem, reaction, solution. We're seeing order out of chaos. We're seeing division. And this is going to, unfortunately, increase. I don't know how many friends you've lost since this whole planned... Uh, stuff has happened, but people get really uh, offended if you don't agree with them or if you don't agree with a certain stance, and we've lost friends. All of us have lost friends. People have chosen sides. They've chosen to believe uh, the science. They've chosen to believe Mr. F. I won't go into any names, but people have chosen to take certain sides, and if you don't take their side, they get offended. So there's things we have to do to keep our heart right as this increases because he says many, the majority, will be offended. And offended means causing someone to feel deeply hurt, upset or angry or wronged, deceived or injured. None of those emotions are fun. And what we've been through in the last three years, which is going to increase, I believe, uh, the next one that they have planned coming, you probably heard about the disease exits they talk about first of all you got to know what you believe what you're going to do you got to know uh, the things that are happening in the world but we can't focus on that we have to keep our eyes on the Lord because if you get your eyes on the world you're going to sink because it's going to I asked my brother all the time I said well how do you think America's doing he said he said it's on a roll downward roll slow roll I was like slow doesn't seem like it's slow to me it seems like it's going pretty fast but there's certain things that you can't talk to with certain people because they get offended. And they watch, uh, they're hooked up to the news, and if, it, if you don't agree with the news, you're wrong, right? And now they're, they're this big campaign about uh, information that is not correct, so if you do your own research, you're wrong. So it's going to get in the natural probably a lot worse, and the persecution shall increase like the Bible says, so we have to stay strong, stay steady, endure to the end. That's what the Lord tells us to do, endure to the end. Proverbs 18, 19, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. When you get someone offended, if you're fighting with somebody, nobody wants to say they're sorry, they build walls around each other, and strong cities couldn't be conquered. And so many times when somebody's upset, they have an argument, People are going into years of not talking to each other, and the enemies shall be of your own household, the Bible says. The plan and the agenda is to destroy families. It's to destroy what God has made and invert everything. And that means literally everything. You see what they're telling you to do in our schools and all these different things, which we can't really talk about anymore, but we realize that we can't even be offended by that because we have to keep our heart right. We have to preach the gospel to the end. We can't control what they're going to do with their agendas, but we have to control our own heart and our, our emotions and things we can do. So, 
Love is turned to hatred. You go to a store and you see friends that you used to love and now you see them and you're like, do I talk to them? Do I even say hi? What happened? Hardness of heart, offenses. And some offenses are very real. Some are imagined, some are made up, but in your mind they're real, but there are things that really are real. They shut their heart and they shut it off and they now become en enemies. But one thing we have to know, and this, write this down if you're taking notes, the offended person builds walls around his heart and becomes loveless and hard. The offended heart is the breeding ground for deception. So you take the bait, you get trapped, you get offended, you get deceived, and now you're, you're just where the enemy wants you. You're isolated. Don't get isolated in this hour. If you can find two people that agree with you or something. And I was excited to talk to someone this week and they said that they're watching our YouTubes for church because they can't find a church. Grab somebody and watch our YouTubes, at least have fellowship with someone. Don't become isolated if you can help it. Get some people together and, because these churches are so infiltrated right now. And you have to just stay simple, stay with the gospel. Um, if they're not preaching the gospel, they're preaching stories, they're doing all this other stuff, and they have other agendas, and they're putting things in. And we can't even be offended by that because the, the Lord told us this is what's going to happen in the end times. So the offended person becomes um, hard. And people that used to love the Lord, serve the Lord, don't want to even talk about the Lord now. They got hurt. They got hurt in church. We've all been hurt in church. And I'm going to tell you a story of, of how I physically got hurt in church. Now in Acts 24, 16, he said, I exercise myself, this is Paul speaking, to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. And that word exercise, exercise is not fun. It's never fun to just go exercise. Oh, yay, I'm going to go work out for an hour. You got to think about it. You got to put yourself, get ready. You got to put on those clothes. You got to do all this, and then you got to prepare yourself. You got to exercise. And this is what we have to do. Re exercise requires effort. It's a choice. I choose to love you. I choose not to be offended. I choose. Oh, yeah, I'm fighting right now. I have to process. Some people don't process. That's why I was thinking what we were talking about yesterday. They're still stuck back 20 years ago because instead of working out, exercising, they just picked up a drink or the cigarette or something. They, they're stunted. They're way back in high school. They have never processed their pain. They've never really worked out their salvation. And it's not fun to work it out, but we have to. We have to work out that pain, work out those problems. Some you know, live at peace with whoever you can. Some you can't, that's on them. But as far as us, you, the Bible says you're supposed to live at peace with all men. So we do that on our part. And it's working through pain. It's working through problems. It's, it's exercising. It's a choice. It's not a feeling. It doesn't feel good sometimes to walk in love. It's a choice. You keep your eyes on the Lord and you walk through it. Some people, you forgive them, but you never have relationships again. There's some people now that I know they're narcissists. They're um, not good. They're toxic people. And I would never have a relationship with them again. Never. But I still forgive them because it's something we have to do. But that doesn't mean you don't remember what they did. It's just that you don't hold on to the poison. You let it go. Some wounds really hurt us. Now, this is a story I'm going to go into years back when I was in our old church. And I had a situation, and Mark's going to put a picture of this up on, on the YouTube. But I had a situation at church, and we were jumping around and dancing, and I was all in. You know, we, had, we did have fantastic music, really good music at the time. And we, we had all the original own people that wrote praise and worship songs, and we sang our own songs, and um, we had a great time. But I was on stage, and I was preaching that night, and I was all in dancing, and my f uh, boot heel got caught on the edge of a potted plant. Now you have to understand, my girlfriend at the time, who had a lot of money, bought me this pair of Chanel boots. Now, it was a tiny pencil heel and a pointed toe. I didn't really care for the pointed toe or the heel, but I loved, it had little, um, you know, little things on the side, little pearls and chains. It was really cute. It was a cute little boot. 
but it was not a boot you should be dancing in. <laughs> and so my, my little pencil heel got stuck on that potted plant and I started to fall. And to brace my fall, I put my wrist down and oh boy, I heard the crack. So I broke my wrist, but I didn't know it. <sighs> my chiropractor was in the front row and I hurt. I get up and I'm like, well, he's a chiropractor. My mind just goes, it's, it's my fault. I should have, you know, had an x-ray. I took the blame for that, but I was offended. Um, so I hand my hand to him and he adjusts it and everything that wasn't broken is now broken. It cracked, 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 cracked. <clears throat> that was an offense. I had to deal with that. Um, then I had to go to the ER. And of course, when you're in the Word of Faith movement, you can't admit that you're in pain. So of course, I preached the rest of the service and I laid hands on people, I prayed for people, I did all that stuff and then um, had to go to the ER. And it, really when I was kind of in that, I don't know what back then you'd call it, but I, I really wasn't in pain until later. And then I had to take the offended test. Uh, here I am, broken wrist, in pain, in the ER, and I'm like, God, where were you? Where were your angels? I was preaching the gospel. Now this is a real thing I had to deal with because I was in that movement where really nothing bad happens. You just say all these affirmations, it's really the law of attraction, but we thought it was faith. And you say all these things and you really don't know how to deal with reality when it hits because you don't think bad things will happen to you. So here I am with a broken wrist and I just kind of, I've never broken anything at that time. If you've ever broken a bone, do you know how much it hurts? You have no idea how much it hurts. And then I thought, well, it's just going to hurt for a little while. It doesn't go away. <laughs> it takes months. And then you got to go to therapy. And then I had to uh, walk in love towards a therapist who just was mean. And as they were giving you therapy, they just, move that, move that, move that, move that. And I was like, I didn't want, I don't know, same thing that when you have a baby, they just take their hand and go, mm -mm -mm. after you have the baby, they just, mm -mm -mm. I wanted to slap that lady across the face. I'm like, do you know how much that hurts right now? Some of you that know. And I had one of these doctors that didn't give you any drugs. He didn't give you nothing. You did everything 100% natural. So, I mean, I was at high level, ah, ouch, and here comes this nurse that's going to just, you know, take me over. I was just ready to go to the moon then. <laughs> so we all deal with offenses, right? So I'm like, God, where are you? And to the ch chiropractor, I'm like, what did you do to me? And then we had, at this time, and I don't usually name drop, but I'm going to tonight, we had a lot of NBA and NFL football players at the time. This was at the, the end of the 90s. And, you know, we had Tony Dungy, his wife was awesome. She was very nice to us, to me personally. And so I'm just to name the names of all the, the Vikings that came. And anyway, so the next service, all them came on a Wednesday night because they had games on Sunday. So they all came on Wednesday night. And so then um, the next week, whenever it was, uh, one of the NBA players, I still remember him. And here I am with this, you know, all this stuff with my, and he came up and he made fun of me. He basically shamed me. And I was so embarrassed. What he, I can't remember what he said, but I just remember that wasn't very nice. Who do you think you are? So then I, here's the offended test. Now, I'm not one that says a lot. I'm one of those silent brewers. So you'd never know because I don't let it out. Some people have no filter and they just, you know where they're at. Bingo. But I just hold stuff in. So here... I have to walk in love towards this. Uh, these, um, I didn't have real good experiences with a lot of these football players because they were very cheap. Whenever we went out to eat, we'd have to pay the bill. And I'm like, these people are making all the money. We had to buy them all Bibles. But anyway. <laughs> you have no idea what life is really like being a, a pastor of a big church. So one comes up after the service and he makes fun of me. And it, it was just like, oh, now I'm embarrassed, you know. Yeah, like you're in the glory and you can't handle it and that kind of stuff. 
So I had to have surgery, and I went, I remember when I went to the um, ER, ER sometimes are not the funnest place to be. They put a cast from here to here. I couldn't even move, and I had to wear that until they were, I, I went, and the, the surgeon goes, oh, it's too swollen. We can't, we can't do surgery for, so I can't remember how long it was now. And I looked at him and said, you are kidding me, aren't you? No, we can't do surgery now. You're too swollen. So then I had to wait. Oh, that was one of the most painful things. And Mark's going to show you a picture. And they put a fixator on me, and, and there's a picture of it, and it's metal. And then my dad would come and pick me up, and it was, you know, it was winter. And I'm like, Dad, my, I feel this. I just hurt. And he goes, it's the metal. <laughs> it's the cold and the metal. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was not fun. So then I had to deal with it. I was like, okay, Lord, here I thought I was serving you, praising you. Uh, that happened to me one other time. I was driving a car, singing praise, and some guy rear-ended me. And I was like, God, where are your angels? So you have to deal with stuff in the real world. And sometimes you have to deal with your belief systems. So here I have to, I'm offended at God. Am I going to trust you again? I mean, I'm, I'm trusting you. How did you let this happen? At my friend, she bought me these boots that were so hazardous, cute, but boy, were they dangerous. <laughs> the therapist, all of this. So I had to do a lot of exercising because especially when you're in a ministry, you can't be offended. So I have had a lot of practice with people. Some things don't even bother me anymore because I've had so much practice. <laughs> Some people get offended over this, and I thought, you haven't been in the ministry long enough. You haven't seen enough. After 45 years of people being offended at everything and putting fires out, you have no idea. Because we had a narc pastor, so I had to deal with all the fires all the time. So I had to deal with my belief system. And Jesus warns of offenses in Luke 17.1. Offenses are going to come. Stumbling blocks are going to come. We have to learn how to deal with it. Most people don't deal with reality. They live in a fake faith force world. And when things happen, they feel shamed and guilted and they just leave. They just leave relationships, they leave churches, and they don't know how to deal with the real stuff. Because right now, in the world that we're living, we got to know how to deal with the real stuff. We're going to have to deal with real grief. People are dying at different ages that we've never seen before. Turbo cancers, hearts, and all the stuff we've never had to deal with before. We have to make sure that we still walk with the Lord no matter what comes our way. Do you hear? We have to know how to deal with offenses and not be mad at God. It didn't help me that I was upset where the angels were because there's going to be a lot of things. Why did this happen? Why is this happening? How come, you know, our people that we're looking up to for leadership and in all areas of life, why are they so weird right now? Why there's such chaos? He said there's going to be offenses, and woe to them through who they come. So there's going to be a day that God deals with these people that are evil. This is not something we can deal with. He's got a, a place for them. He's going to deal with them. Vengeance belongs to the Lord, so that's not our job right now. Is, that's his job. What we have to do is guard our heart, make sure that we keep walking in love and wisdom. It's wisdom for you to get rid of some toxic people. You can love them from afar. You don't have to be going out to eat with them. You don't have to go here and there and everywhere. It's wisdom to maybe not deal with some of your kids right now. Some of them are in places that are very dark and they don't want help. Some people don't want to listen to warnings. Some people want to live in their deception. They want to live in their bubbles got to let them go. And that's hard. I, I'm a fixer. I like to fix people. I like to love people. And then you become a magnet for narcissists yeah. because they use you and abuse you, throw you away. So you have to know there's some people that are going to cause stumbling, but woe to those through whose stumbling comes. God's going to deal with them, but we don't want to stumble anyone. We don't want to stand before God and go, this person was really going to serve the Lord, but you were such a jerk, and you were, they were looking to you, and you really hurt. You, you, you want to stand before the Lord, and he says, good and faithful servant, Amen. right? We have accountability, and some people don't think they're ever going to have to, but we do. We have accountability to the Lord how we treat his people. 
and people that aren't saved. So woe to them through whom they come. Don't put stumbling blocks in people's way. Some offenses, wounds, they really hurt us. I had to take responsibility that I was the one that chose to wear those boots. I was the one that chose to dance that night. I was the one that fell. I was the one that put my hand there. I was the one that walked to the chiropractor and let him break my wrist all the more. It was still my choice. And there's some things we do in life, we put ourselves on that road. It's an accident. Things happen. Sometimes it's, it's really not your fault, but you were in this situation. Things happen because there's a devil loose. We have flesh loose. We're living in a world that's not perfect yet, right? But the main thing is guard your heart with all diligence. Watch your heart. That is something that you can. Your emotions. Learn, I, one thing I learned out of this movement that wasn't totally, I learned how to control my emotions. Some women are so out of control because I had to control my emotions, not say everything I wanted to say, not do everything. I had people looking to me and I couldn't act out. I couldn't melt down. So Proverbs 19.11, we are to be slow to angry, slow to finding faults. You know, all your friends have faults. Join the club. You know why? No one's perfect. You got to learn to love people in spite of their problems because you have them too. So strangers' rudeness. Be slow to anger. They're going to drive weird. Okay, they drive weird. Why are you losing your temper? Now you're weird. Two weirds don't make it right. Let's turn to Matthew 24. We're going to close here. We can quietly smolder. We can have a volcano attack. We can, what do we do? We look to God. It trains us. We run to God or run to bitterness. Your choice, our choice. Run to God or be bitter. <clears throat> Endure in the Bible says in verse 13, continue on in hardship, persecution, continue on. Last, remain under trials. Be strong, persevere. We have been taught a sugar-coated gospel. Times are coming, hard times are coming, and most people are not prepared for it because they've been sitting under watered-down ear tickling. What does that mean? You sit under people that you want them to tell you what you want to hear. Well, the Bible doesn't tell us what we want to hear. It tells us the truth. He says wars and rumors of wars are coming. Betrayal, offenses, these are things that, well, I don't want to hear that. That's not, doesn't make me feel good. Truth doesn't have to f make you feel good. Truth makes you face reality. And this is what the enemy with all the agendas, it's always to live in a false reality, not in a false game. Live in these games. These kids are in these worlds and these levels. They don't even know how to communicate with someone else. They're addicted. All this stuff is what the enemy wants. He doesn't want us to live in the real world. So verse 4, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. In verse 10, Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. What happens? You get offended, it turns to hatred, and then it turns to betrayal. Right there. There you see the three levels. You get hurt. You don't deal with that hurt. You cut the person off. You don't deal with it. The Bible says go to that person and work it out. Oh, no, we don't do that. We put our flesh up, never going to let anyone hurt me again. Then you have a hard heart, and then it's hard to hear from God because we're so hardened, right? So don't allow yourself to become offended. You will have opportunities and tests nonstop. But we choose, will we pass the offended test or not? And it says in verse th for 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We're in a marathon. We're not in a sprint. We might have been hurt in churches. You might have been hurt in marriages. Your kids might be hurting you. That's a sprint. We have to endure for the long haul. And only God knows your days. God knows how many days we have. And the devil can't take us out, I don't believe, until we have our fulfilled days and our trust and our hope is in God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that we continue on. We learn how to endure relationships, our jobs, families, situations. We continue on 
If we've been betrayed, that doesn't mean we don't love the, they don't, maybe they love the Lord, they were deceived, they hurt you, they, they got lied to, you got lied to, now you're all in hardness of heart. It's just not worth it. Help us be strong. Help us persevere beneath a heavy burden. Help us remain to last under trials. With your guidance and your help, in Jesus' name. Everyone said? If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison, her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2, and on the Living in His Presence Church website, where you can access the messages on the top center of the main webpage. There are free audio downloads of the messages. We are viewer supported. On the main webpage at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.